Now, just a few words about our presenters today before I introduce our first one. Uh, today's presenters come from three post-secondary institutions in Ontario that have received support through the fund to develop new academic programs that will enable students to find employment in energy management and energy efficiency industries. Centennial College, Seneca College, and the University of Windsor were among the successful applicants to two of last year's calls for expressions of interest, uh, which were titled Building Workforce Capability for Energy Efficiency and Training Tomorrow with Energy Managers. These calls aim to recruit and support programs that would combine industry-relevant experiential learning opportunities with an academic program focusing on either energy management or an energy efficiency component that was integrated into an existing program of study. Other successful applicants included the Métis Nation of Ontario, working with Confederation College, and the World Green Building Council in partnership with York University. The efforts of these institutions will help to ensure that Ontario has the skilled labour force over the upcoming years to take advantage of opportunities for energy efficiency in the commercial, institutional, industrial, and residential sectors. The investments in new curricula, training materials, and industry partnerships by Seneca, Centennial, and the University of Windsor will lead to approximately 100 students over the next two years getting the comprehensive skills in energy management that are currently in high demand. Our first speaker will be Herb Sinek, manager of the Centennial Energy Institute at Centennial College in Scarborough. The program he is heading is called Training Tomorrow's Industrial and Building Energy Efficiency Specialists and will, be, and will provide training in energy management and energy auditing techniques. One of the strong features of their program is that it has a flexible schedule, meaning that students can work at their own pace depending on their current schedule. We hope that this will allow students to upgrade their skills while maintaining their existing employment. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Herb Senek. Take it away, Herb. Thank you very much, Daniel. Can everyone hear me? Good. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm introducing today a uh, training program that we call T2IBs for short. Dave, uh, Daniel gave you the, the long version. Uh, Centennial is developing it with OPA and several key partners, and it's to develop a workforce that has competence in energy management. And as Daniel explained in his introduction, that program was funded under a special RFP within the Conservation Fund. Uh, on behalf of the team, I'd like to deliver our thanks to our supporters at OPA for the opportunity to participate in this exciting initiative. Could I have the first slide, please? Now, to state the obvious, from the perspective of a training provider such as Centennial, our inputs are people who are seeking training or retraining, our potential students. Our outputs are obviously qualified personnel that exhibit skills that suit a particular industry need. Now, in this case, the OPA has provided the context for the industry need. Its mandate under the Integrated Power System Plan, that is IPSP1, to meet the 2010 target of an additional 1350 megawatts peak electricity reduction toward an overall reduction of 6,300 megawatts has seen it sponsor a number of conservation initiatives like the Electricity Retrofit Incentive Plan with the LDCs and the Industrial Energy Efficiency Program. And further, as part of its holistic talent management strategy, it's seeking to provide the workplace and workforce capacity to ensure that companies participate in these programs. So what's called for here is really programming to train the workforce in energy management techniques. Where is this workforce coming from? Well, we see four likely groups. Current students from a range of science, engineering, and technology programs at the colleges and universities, all are welcome. Career retrainers, so now we see with glum economic news, unfortunate layoffs, plant closings, we're seeing an influx of people that are seeking to apply their hard-earned skills to new areas. Skilled auto workers, for, for an example, may have great technical skills that could be applied to the energy area. Uh, foreign trained professionals, is another huge group. Canada sets very high standards for immigrants to enter. As a result, we have a number of highly qualified people who are underemployed. So many of those people that I've met over the past few years bring 10 to 15 years of experience, a lot of them in the power and energy sectors. Most of them are carrying master's degrees or PhDs. So we have an opportunity to provide specific career training that those individuals can use to apply that knowledge and skill for the benefit of Ontario business. And the final group, really last but not least, we have folks from industry. Maybe it's a plant facilities manager who's been given responsibility for achieving energy reduction, or a purchasing manager who's been working on energy procurement but has the responsibility for achieving further cost savings. Maybe it's the employee who's coming off their production line, now looking for reassignment within the organization. All of these people can use the energy management training to achieve their goals. So the T2IB's program positions itself at the nexus of those requirements. Could I have the next slide, please? 
let's take a quick look at what the program contains. Um, this slide can either be looked at as depicting a pyramid with more refined skills building one upon the other, the unfinished top representing additional experience and professional certification that's required, or it could be viewed as a road that leads off into the horizon. Each step brings more knowledge and more experience. And again, the future there is up to the student. So accordingly, the base level presumes some background knowledge. So we're not looking for anything extensive. The prospective student should have a decent understanding of some basic def definitions of things like viscosity, specific heat, latent heat. Might have basic arithmetic, simple algebraic expressions, be able to read charts and graphs. Um, conce understand concepts of cost and interest and units of measure. Uh, that foundation then supports a further technical education on important topics in energy systems and energy management. The content from this program is derived from an energy management training program that was developed in the UK by the Institute of Energy and several other partners. It's called Training in Energy Management Through Open Learning, or TMOL for short. And you can see the principal content here for TMOL program, it's, it's in the yellow and tan blocks. TMOL is organized in modules. They build upon one another to gradually build an understanding of the energy systems. Now, OPA has expressed a particular need to see energy savings projects identified and presented to senior management of companies to ensure that they're implemented and that applications to programs like ERIP and IEP are made. So we're augmenting learning material with more discussion around developing the financial case for the project including basic principles of engineering economics, concepts of life cycle costing. We're providing limited training on tools like Red Screen, EE4, and the Building Intelligence Quotient, and we're including content on making the pitch. The green block at the very top represents an absolutely critical aspect of the program, the practical experience. And our team includes individuals that have excellent audit experience. They will mentor students through one or more audits of commercial and industrial facilities. Which ones the students participate depends on their preferred area of focus. The concept here is that students could participate in as many audits as practical within their time of training. So each student will be expected to lead, with mentor's guidance, one of the audit teams and to generate a suitable report for the client. That's a requirement for their completion of the program alongside evaluation of their academic knowledge of the subject. Can I have the next slide, please? The original TMOL program, progenitor of the T2IB's training that we're talking about here, is designed as a self-study method with mentor support to students. And we felt that this represented an excellent approach for meeting the needs of a diverse group of learners with different backgrounds and experience levels. Uh, Centennial and a number of the other colleges use a system called Blackboard. You can see a little snapshot of the menu of it on the left-hand side of this slide. Blackboard enables a whole range of content delivery and class management features, such as an announcement page so the instructor can send announcements to the class, information about the course content, how to contact staff, um, all the course documents, assignments for the students to complete, communication tools such as being able to email uh, all the class, uh, a discussion board that allows for threaded conversations that so students can engage in with the instructor or between themselves links to external resources and other tools. It also gives the instructor access to an online gradebook and ways to immediately feed back um, to students how they're doing in, the, in their progression of the program. So a very nice interface. Now, um, what we can do is our individual modules of this training will be loaded up in the Blackboard under the course documents so that the students who are enrolled in the program could access the entire content as they need to to complete their studies. There will be um, the individual modules they're learning plus resource documents to support. Under the announcements, we can put upcoming audit dates and also broadcast them to students so they have a chance to enroll. And we can have our instructor available to answer student questions within the, the discussion area or by email and telephone. What we'll also do is run in-person workshops, probably six to eight hours long, six times a year at Centennial to provide a face-to-face -face content review and delivery of the material that's in about three to four modules at a time. Um, those workshops are optional. They provide a different environment for learning for those students who happen to learn better in a classroom environment where they can interact. So if possible, we'll film and archive those sessions for online users to access. 